Okay, this is the next update video. So uh, I got two more of these tables built and I'm just using this plastic table to figure out some track work. So this is where the hole in the wall is gonna come out and there's gonna be a turnout right on the other side and I just wanna show you that quick. So this loop here, this main line, there'll be a turnout off of it here, and then the straight track's gonna go all the way down, and before it comes out of the wall on the other side, there'll be a turnout, which will have to be remote operated. And that will allow the train to go into the yard this way, or the train to go into the yard the other way. Uh, what I'm going to do is the modules will continue. I have more tables and this will have a turnout on probably on the next table and it will go into the double track and then basically a double track will be a return loop somewhere down here. So the train can come out of the wall on this branch line we'll call it go back into the double track and then turn around right hand running and go back on the other outside track so once again turn out turn out right here into the into this uh, track here and then it'll go on a loop down there and come back and then it'll be facing the other way and this is essentially a Y so you can go either direction I'll have the option most of the time I want the train to just come down here because it'll create a longer run if that makes sense and then come down and then it can pull into the giant staging yard now if for some reason I want the option I've played around with this for about three hours to get a configuration I like and and works within this space uh, and doesn't use too tight a track. The only tight track is there's one 15 here. Everything else is a 19 or a 28 radius. So um, it comes into the either basically the top of the yard ladder or the the second bottom one but it can has the option right here to be on the bottom so I've got both sides covered it would be coming this way normally and if it would be going this way like I say um, I don't think I'm going to use that option all the time but I want the option at least so um, down here at the other end this module is for when this this table here is for when I would have these hooked up at shows, but having those tracks are glued, having that like that, I can't use 19 and 17 inch double track and start onto my um, helix. So there'll have to be an alternate table that sits here uh, and essentially start turning, you know, turn on the table, I guess, and then go up the helix and then it would come out over here. So that's the basics of what I've got. I've It's gonna be easier when I have more tables built. I, I need a little bit more wood, more casters, more of those um, barrier pieces. I used up every, all the material I could to, and I built these two tables. I had some issues with leveling and I still do with this table. This table was a, was quite the thing and I'm gonna have to just unscrew it one more time because in the back these legs are just slightly still not um, trimmed enough but I did it in a way you know where essentially you know, if you cut too short you, you can't put more back on so um, things like this spur that's open to interpretation I could change that I don't know I'm just fooling around but what really matters is this turnout is going to be in in the wall. Now, what I think 
will make a lot more sense is to have that turnout, um, excuse me, have that turnout, let's just zoom in closer here because if I go and make it into double track sooner, if I make it so that the turnout off of this main line is here and then the other turnout is here, I guess I could reach it. If I put it down there, it's gonna cause chaos. So that's what I'm gonna do. And gives you a view of back there. What I like is, is that this um, power plant is basically the end of the Wyoming section and goes into the Utah section. So just to give you kind of a, where things are standing for the towns or cities on my layout. So this is Missoula and all of this I consider Missoula. It's not really prototypical. It's prototypical by what railroads are there, but of course it has to work within my space. So it's got the Milwaukee Road service facility. And then this is all open running in, in terms of, there's no town. And I did that on purpose because I want it to be far apart. Don't want the trains chasing its tail. It's the best use of the space. So I consider this yard the Silver Bow Yard, which is a, a Chicago, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy via the Colorado and Southern branch coming up from Colorado uh, and Wyoming came to this yard. And uh, that will be something that I actually don't have here. This Butte sticker is going to move down. And Silver Bow is beside Butte in real life. And Silver Bow is a Union Pacific and CB&Q area, or Colorado and Southern is their subsidiary. So right here uh, where this garbage is, let me just move that. Sorry. I've had a lot of stuff going on. Um this is where Butte is going to be, and uh, there's a coal mine that will be here. Um, copper mine is going to be here. So I consider Silver Bow Butte the same place, and it takes up this L. And then when it gets over to my workbench, it's reverse loops and return loops. And the same thing over there at Missoula in the closet, it's return loops. Okay? So... It's a nolix on the top level, which means it's a helix in the layout itself and has to go back and forth, I think, seven or eight times to traverse the layout. It climbs up the grade like a switchback. And I have a specific video if you search nolix, N-O-L-I-X, um, it'll come up. So explaining that properly. Now, on the bottom level, I have a station from when I was a kid that I built, and this will be a little tiny tiny Wyoming town, like not much represented, but a station. And then all the way down here, this will be a roundhouse for um, Green River, uh, Union Pacific facility, turntable here. This will be the hoodoo. And then over here is, it's all open running, the Sherman Hill and the the uh, Hermosa Tunnel. And then I call this area Ghost Town, but there is a station, another small station, and an elevator. And then this is where, back where I was saying earlier, where this turnout is, it crosses over there. Now, into Utah. So, top is Wyoming, bottom is, or sorry, bottom is Wyoming, top is Montana. Jeez. And then this is all apart right now because I'm working on the scenery but this side uh, is Livingston, which is a Northern Pacific town only. And it's got a loop that comes by, okay? Now, there's different return loops. There's a second higher main line. But where that turnout was, down by the coal mine, this is all what I consider Utah, and this is the edge of Salt Lake City. And what the purpose of having all these towns is I like passenger trains the most. I like freight trains too. Long coal trains and copper and iron, all that stuff. But um, of course I like all trains. 
transition. But I like passenger trains, and I want to model um, all the different ones. As an example, there's a the Northern Pacific. So on this side, on the expansion, on the modules, this is going to be the Las Vegas section. Now, what I'm thinking is initially this yard was, I called it staging, but it usually if you look at a track plan, it represents something. And it's either going to be a yard for Las Vegas, which is one option, or the other option is to make it so that this yard is a Los Angeles staging. But down here would be Las Vegas. No matter what, the casino and or casinos and the air base that I want to model are going to be on these modules. And no matter what, there'll be a passenger station over here. And this will be the biggest passenger station that I'll have modeled because it literally is going to be the biggest yard, the most tracks, the most length. Um, so it's really a decision I have to decide. Do I want it to be Los Angeles or do I want it to be Las Vegas? Now, if that was coming out of the wall, and we'll go back into the room for a sec. If you get confused, just send me a message. I'll try and explain it because it, I'm confusing myself. But this loop here around this um, um, coal power plant has that option of going to Utah or basically going to Nevada from Wyoming. And I understand that those don't touch, but it's, it's really the layout of my house, the room that I built, and the portable modules that make it make sense to me. So city of Los Angeles, city of San Francisco, um, I'm drawing a blank here, North Coast Limited, Hiawatha, Olympian Hiawatha, Butte Special. Those are all the passenger trains I already have. I have those trains in here. Okay, so I have heavyweight versions. I have 1947 versions, 1955 versions, and i pretty close to having 1965 versions as well. So I can run basically any era. Um, when I picked up my mail... I was able to grab a few things that I've been waiting for a few months. So this was a really good deal on, I think it's 29 Burlington uh, reefers and their precision craft models or whatever that name of it is. Precision masters, I guess, before Intermountain. And there's a couple of them that actually aren't assembled. Not a big deal. I have lots of these in the PFE. So that was a really good deal. Six bucks a, a boxcar Canadian, which is nothing. And it's just because it's CB and Q. I can run that on Northern Pacific, no problem. I picked up this train set, which I'm giving to my son. And it's actually sealed. And he knows about it. And we're going to make a video specific um, of him reviewing it. So watch for that video coming up. Uh, I got a pair. It's a very rare. I didn't pay much for it because the seller didn't know what it was. These are from a company called V-Line. And if you look at the Spook Show Encyclopedia, it was, I think, under $40 for the pair. This is the dummy. They're identical. Um, both Union Pacific. and the So there's this dummy, and then the other one uses the guts of a Concorde PA-1. It's over on the modules right now, so... They don't have the right box or anything. V-Line is, I guess, a failed company, if you look it up. But uh, most of the sets are Pennsylvania. So um, it's just kind of neat to have. You know, it's in my little vintage side collection. Um, I picked up CB&Q uh, GP7s. I'll show you them in a second because they're in the other room. And then the big thing was, um, this is a new old stock set of Microtrains FTs ABBA. Um, pretty excited for these locomotives. I've heard nothing but good things. I do have the decoders on order. Um, just be putting normal Digitrax ones in. But I'm looking forward to that because they'll pull lots of cars and they'll be nice and reliable. And, well, you would hope that the couplers are going to be working with the box cars 
out of the box. Now that comes to my next thing. Here's the Atlas GP7s and uh, I have to get decoders for them as well. They'd be on the same order. One black one and one, one black bird and one red bird. So I'm having a lot of issues with my Cato um, passenger cars uh, coming uncoupled. And at some point, like I don't have the same issues with uh, microtrains converted passenger cars that I have, but my Cato sets all of a sudden are just, the couplers are not holding up. So I'm not sure exactly why, because everything's level. I'm not asking a lot of them. I used to run these for hours and hours, and now I'm just having uh, nothing but issues, especially with uh, these three. So <clears throat> I know this isn't prototypical, but I was just kind of testing. So on this uh, scene here, uh, what I'm going to have is, uh, uh, I think it's B29 um, Super Fortress. Uh, they're based out of Nellis Air Force Base at Las Vegas. That's what will be modeled. I'm going to go for another um, Air Force Base. Um, remember that in there, those modules, even though they come out for me to move, they're not really meant to be moved unless I ever moved. It'd be a lot of work, if that makes sense, the way that they're sitting uh, and what have you, whereas these modules are totally portable and meant to be moved, and they actually uh, go in the carts, the carts act as a crate. So, um, anyway, sorry, I'm kind of jumping around, but basically the, the Las Vegas modules, I think, is something that people will like to see at a show, and the one thing that I'm kind of considering is possibly taking... And I don't know, it's going to depend when I start working on it more again. This um, Volkswagen plant with the moving Volkswagens inside of it, uh, assembly line, if I'm going to keep it in Salt Lake City, which I don't mind, and it would be part of my home layout, I guess, or if I'm going to put it on um, these modules, because, again, that's going to be something that um, I think people would enjoy to see, something different. You know, everyone's seen a train... On an N-Track module. I try to go with the extra bit with the uh, interesting things modeled and everyone likes the uh, the airport. I had an airport on a module a long time ago and Barry still talks about it and and I mean you know he's got an airport uh, as well a small airstrip that he's putting in. He just likes the lights and the planes and you can get a lot of 144 scale airplanes. These are the ones I'm building a on my table right now. So um, I have the option to basically put a um, REA Express uh, freight depot up here somewhere where they service the passenger trains. I'm thinking a car washer um, for passenger cars, like with the uh, scrubbing uh, mops on the side. And I want that to be uh, powered, uh, animated, Lots of lights, the same as my main layout. I got lazy. I haven't. I just put these lamps on for the video. And uh, yeah, I got excited. I, <laughs> I'll say it is what it is. So, um, and I, like I say, I could still put some other industries on here as well. But what's going to be different about this is if you go to a show uh, in show configuration, this Helix won't, won't come with. But in show configuration, on this end here, I'll be connected to Barry uh, if Barry brings his six, he has six of these tables. And uh, essentially, uh, I'd have this yard, but then I actually on purpose, of course, in my living room, I have it facing this way. But because I'm going to have these lights on here, I'm going to have a sky uh, backdrop that I remove in sections and set up for the show. But what's different is... Um, Barry will actually be, if he plugs his modules in the way that it's going to work, uh, let me just think here for a second, he is going to be, he would leave his bigger return loop unless we make a transition piece, which we can do. But either way, he could be on either side, we call it the customer side, the the viewing public side, 
And essentially, uh, we've never done it this way. We've always been on the other side or the back of the layout, and then everyone comes by. But this time, what I want to do is I want to have a wireless throttle, which I don't own. And uh, oddly enough, I'm going to be upgrading Digitrax to wireless at some point for at home. It would be nice to have a wireless throttle. And then I can talk to people on this side of the layout. And the back of the layout is the back of the layout. This L, remember, there's more, there's five modules that go this way. This giant L will be basically shoved in a corner. And I would be standing on this side talking to people. The backdrop is there. Yes, you could go on the other side if you wished. But because of the way it is, it's basically inviting people to stand at it and see it as opposed to being a square where everyone in the uh, that operates the layout is on the inside of the square. So it's something we always wanted to do. We talked about it and now we're actually going to do it. So I've got these nice stools from Ikea. I don't know the name of them, but they're height adjustable. Super comfortable. You can sit on them for the whole time. And uh, like I say, I have to keep building these, get a few more supplies. It's uh, quite affordable. They're rigid. I don't have the cross braces on the these two yet. Again, got excited. Want to run my trains. Want to test it out. I'm missing certain pieces of track. Um, last time that these, these five modules were set up um, was right before COVID. So in uh, Winnipeg show in 20, I think it was 2018, honestly. So... Um, They've held up. They've been in storage. They've just been waiting for me to finally use them. It's kind of cool to, you know, have uh, bench work at home and have everything finally connect what you've been building for a long time. So um, I've got some different neon signs. I need some different ones for Vegas. They do make a Las Vegas neon sign from Miller Engineering. So I'm going to have that. want to have at least one casino, if not two, uh, maybe a horse track. You know, those sorts of exciting things. Circus train. Um, the wedding, the little wedding chapel. I've got lots of room. There's five of these tables to model um, the Las Vegas that I want to model. So, obviously, modeler's license. But um, no matter what, if I do Las Vegas here and Los Angeles there, I'm doing the Las Vegas uh, station before they tore it down and now it's the plaza hotel uh, on the old strip on fremont street if you've ever been there it makes sense to me that las vegas would be down here because they're far enough apart it's actually farther than the stations that are in there if i have los angeles uh, union passenger terminal this would be the big enough space to model it accurately and uh, I don't have it they do make a 3d print it's like 300 American I think for the Missoula station it's going to go right here uh, they also make one for Livingston and it's going to go right there so I'm basically other than Salt Lake City I'm modeling the stations and the passenger trains that I want to model and then I'm filling in some gaps with things I really like like the Air Force and Army and the UFO and the nuclear plant and all of that. So um, I'm really happy with how things are coming out. I uh, I took some rubbing alcohol and water mix and this uh, Richard scraper. It's got a hook end and a very sharp end. And man, did it! It was a little hard on the elbows, but. It worked awesome. I put down those puppy pee pads uh, for the wet sand that got everywhere. I completely scraped this off because this was the first time I ever used play sand. And it was too thick. And uh, basically, it made it so that the track wasn't sitting level. And we can't have that. So on here, um, this section here. This one's okay. But this one is the next one from this bridge um, roughly to to here where I have some some issues before I can glue the track down. So that'll be the next one I attempt, but I've got a Northern Pacific uh, tugboat under construction 
uh, ship, basically. And uh, I've, I, I've uh, you know, ignored up here. I've got a lot of railroad real estate, if you think about it. And this is where um, the top of the helix uh, goes to. I want to get this bridge scene done. This has kind of been something that's uh, bothered me. I want to finish it. So this is what I'm working on. The Michaels is where I get in Regina, where I live, um, the plaster cloth. And the plaster cloth that I'm getting, yeah, I keep finding in my stash of stuff. And Michael's had a fire before Christmas, and it's been closed now for three months. And I don't know if there's another area, another place that sells plaster cloth, but if you pay shipping on it, it's quite expensive because it's kind of heavy. So I've got some more great stuff. I've got the tape on now. Got the track all disaster apart. Um, I've got... I know what I need to do on this side. I don't need much for risers. I just need to go from here to here to make the connection between the upper main line and the bottom main line on the bottom level. And then I do need a few more turnouts for sure, probably a dozen, um, depending on how many there'll be on the Las Vegas. I definitely need some more curved track. Straight track, I am good on. I still have that much. And um, I need some more of those V16 sets. More of a me talking out loud reminder for myself. I do watch my videos and I'm like, oh yeah, that's what I was going to do. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's lots going on. And uh, I just wanted to update you. And I am going to leave it at that. All right, so... I'll give you one more gander of the layout. I'm including a Y, which I didn't have room for before. Ys are fun to operate with a switcher. You can turn your observation around without a turntable. Very prototypical in a passenger yard. Okay, so to give you an idea how long this is, I think the, what is it? 11 car set, I could put two of those plus the locomotives um, end to end on each track. So however long of yard spur those are. Okay, so uh, all right, I will leave it at that and there will be lots. Make sure if you aren't subscribed that you do, not that it matters, but there's going to be, if you like trains, this is the place to come watch them. Talk to you later.